Hello, and congratulations on purchasing a new Ford Expedition. You've just joined a growing family of proud owners who sees the opportunity to buy a unique full-size sport utility vehicle that makes no compromise when it comes to fulfilling customer needs. Expedition is a distinctive vehicle that redefines the full-size sport utility market. And that's because it's designed to meet the needs of active, dynamic people who don't want to give up style and comfort for full-size utility and off-road ruggedness. In every sense of the word, the all-new Ford Expedition is the benchmark for a new class of sport utility vehicles. The video program you're about to see is designed to acquaint you with your new Expedition. It's our way of saying thanks for choosing what is destined to be one of the most popular full-size sport utility vehicles on the road today. All of us at Ford Motor Company want you to be satisfied with your new Expedition. This video will help you become familiar with its features. You made a wise choice. Expedition is a masterpiece of automotive engineering, and I'm sure you'll be pleased with its performance, versatility, and ruggedness for many years to come. So sit back, relax, and get ready to begin your adventure with the all-new Ford Expedition. Welcome to the exciting world of Ford Expedition, the ultimate expression of a rugged, highly sophisticated, full-size sport utility vehicle. During this program, we'll be talking to you about some of the unique features that are designed to make your ownership experience pleasing and rewarding. That's right. We'll cover things that will affect your security and safety, as well as your comfort and convenience. Plus, we'll show you how to operate and service your new sport utility vehicle. And finally, we'll demonstrate the proper way to handle a 4x4 on and off the road. We've taken special care to cover as many features as we can during this presentation. So if there's anything that you would like to learn about that we haven't covered, please consult your owner guide. It contains valuable information that every owner and driver should know. We also recommend that you look at all the decals and labels located throughout your new vehicle. They provide important warnings and information that you will want to review from time to time. So let's begin our program by taking a look at some of the important security and safety features that have been designed into your new expedition. And there's no better place to start than with your keys. Your ignition key is unique. Because without it, your vehicle won't start, and I mean that literally. Your key is equipped with a special passive anti-theft system transponder embedded in the key head. The transponder communicates with your engine's electronics so that your vehicle will start. If you lose your key or if it's stolen, it would be a good idea to have your passive anti-theft system reprogrammed at your dealer as soon as possible. There may be times, however, when you'll want to program a new transponder key to your passive anti-theft system. And you can do that by following a very simple procedure. To program a spare key to your passive anti-theft system, insert your original key into your ignition and turn it to the on position. As soon as you see the theft light in the instrument cluster turn on and off, remove the original key and insert the spare within 15 seconds turning it to on. Now your engine is ready to start. Most expeditions are equipped with a remote keyless entry system, and it's designed to allow you to lock and unlock your vehicle up to 40 feet away. To unlock the driver's door, press the unlock button on your key fob once. To unlock all doors, as well as the lift gate, press the button a second time before five seconds elapse. To lock up your vehicle, press the lock button once, and to make sure everything's locked, press it a second time within five seconds. If the doors and lift gate are properly locked, the horn will chirp and the parking lamps will flash. But if your horn chirps twice, it means a door is ajar and it must be closed before the system locks everything up. When panic is pressed, your vehicle's horn will beep and the lights will flash intermittently for approximately three minutes. Pressing panic again or turning the ignition key to on will turn off the personal security alarm. If you ever need to replace a key fob, you'll need to reprogram all the key fobs to your vehicle. To program a new key fob, insert your key into the ignition switch and turn it to the on position five times without starting the engine. After the fifth cycle, hold the key at the on position and press the unlock button once for each key fob. Now your new remote keyless entry system will be programmed to your vehicle. 
Remember, if you program one key fob, you must reprogram all your key fobs. Otherwise, the reprogramming process will erase the programming in your other key fobs. Reprogramming all key fobs will prevent anyone from gaining entry to your vehicle. To make sure everything is okay, turn your ignition off and press the key fob's panic button to see if your expedition goes into the panic mode. Now let's take a look at some of the key features found on your new expedition. One important feature is the illuminated entry. Whenever someone uses the remote transmitter to unlock the doors or sound the personal alarm, the interior lights and the lights on the optional running boards will turn on automatically, adding to your security and safety. As you may have already guessed, the people at Ford are very concerned about safety. That's why they've designed your new vehicle with so many safety features. For example, each Expedition is equipped with two airbags, one for the driver, the other for the front seat passenger. When safety belts are properly worn, the airbags can provide front seat occupants with additional protection during a moderate to severe front end collision. The driver's airbag is located at the center of the steering wheel, while the passenger bag resides in the instrument panel right above the glove box. To make sure the system is operating properly, always check to see that the airbag readiness light comes on for six seconds when you start the engine. If the system is not operating properly, four different things can happen. The readiness light will not come on, or it will flash or stay lit, or you'll hear a series of five beeps. Now, if any of these conditions occur, even intermittently, have your airbag system checked at your nearest Ford dealership. Safety belts are another important safety feature, so make sure that you always buckle up, even on a short trip. To fasten yourself in, pull the lap shoulder belt from its retractor so that it crosses your shoulder and chest, making sure that the belt is not twisted. Then insert the belt tongue into the buckle. Your outboard safety belt also features a height adjuster. It slides to five different positions to make sure you're comfortable. To adjust the height of the belt, push down on the release button and slide the adjuster to the bottom of its travel. Then raise it to a height that's most comfortable. As you may have already noticed, your shoulder belt lets you move around freely. And it will continue to provide this freedom of movement until the safety belt retractor senses an emergency situation, such as hard braking, sudden cornering, or a five mile per hour collision or greater. Under these conditions, the emergency sensing retractor automatically locks, securing you within the webbing. In addition to the emergency locking feature, some of the safety belt retractors on your new vehicle feature an automatic locking mechanism for fastening a child safety seat, thereby eliminating the need for a child safety belt clip. Your automatic locking retractors are located at six seat positions, including the entire second row, as well as the outboard seating positions in the third row. To activate the automatic locking mode, pull the belt loop all the way out until it's fully extended. Then let it slowly retract. As the belt returns, you'll hear a clicking sound, indicating that the retractor is in the automatic locking mode. As you can see, the retractor prevents the belt from being extended back out again while in the automatic mode, thereby locking a child's safety seat tightly against the seat. The retractor will remain in this mode until you unbuckle the safety belt and allow it to recoil all the way back into the retractor. Expedition's engineering staff really did their homework when they designed the door system on your new sport utility vehicle. They've integrated a high-strength steel side beam in each door for your protection. Plus, they've incorporated child-proof safety locks in the rear doors to prevent children from opening the vehicle from inside. When the child-proof lock is in the up position, the rear doors can only be opened from the outside door handle. But when it's in the down position, both the inside and outside door handles will operate normally. Expedition's four-wheel anti-lock brake system adds immeasurably to the performance of your vehicle by allowing you to maintain steering control when braking on slippery road surfaces. Anti-lock brakes are completely automatic, so don't pump the brake to stop your vehicle. Just push the brake pedal all the way down. When the system activates, you may hear a mechanical noise and feel a pulsation through the brake pedal. This is perfectly normal. It means your brake system's doing its job. 
Unfortunately, though, accidents do happen. So if you're ever involved in one, you'll need to remember that your vehicle is equipped with a hidden safety device called a fuel pump shutoff switch. It's designed to shut down the flow of fuel whenever your vehicle is severely jarred. The fuel pump shutoff switch is located below the passenger side instrument panel. Now, if the switch is triggered, a fuel reset light will illuminate in the instrument cluster, requiring you to reset the mechanism by depressing the red button on the switch. Once the switch is reset, your engine can be started. But remember, before you reset the switch or start your vehicle, always check around the accident site to see if there's any fuel present. If you see or smell fuel, don't activate anything until the accident site is safe and secure. In fact, if fuel is present, it's best to call the local fire department. And here's another tip. If you own a four-wheel drive expedition that needs to be towed for any reason, it must be carried on a flatbed truck or towed by a wheel lift and dolly with all four wheels off the ground. Otherwise, damage could occur to your four-wheel drive system. A two-wheel drive vehicle, on the other hand, can be towed by a conventional tow truck as long as its front wheels are on the ground and the rear wheels are in the air. And another thing, if your new expedition features an optional air suspension system, make sure it's shut off before towing your vehicle anywhere. That way the vehicle won't attempt to adjust its height while being towed. We'll talk more about the optional air suspension system later in the program. Comfort and convenience play an important role in Expedition's overall design. In fact, Ford's attention to detail has produced an interior that is completely functional and user-friendly. For example, Expedition's interior designers placed several important power controls on the driver's armrest where they are within easy reach. These convenient switches control the power mirrors, power windows, and power door locks. What I like about the driver's power window is the express down feature. It's operated by this two position switch. Pressing the switch all the way down and releasing it automatically lowers the window through its full travel. If the switch is pressed a second time while the window's traveling, the glass will stop at that position. To control the window all the way through its travel, press the switch only to the first position until the window reaches the height you want. Some of you may have ordered an optional auxiliary climate control system with your new expedition. If you did, it allows you to regulate the climate in the rear passenger area from two separate control panels. One is located in the overhead console and the other is directly behind. In addition to the control panels, the auxiliary climate control system features six vents that direct air to the rear passenger area, three in the second row two in the third, and one at the rear quarter trim panel. There are two ways to regulate the auxiliary climate control system. Either the driver can control the system from the front overhead console, or a second row passenger can control the system from the rear console, if the front overhead blower switch is pointing to rear. Now here's a good tip. During extreme cold weather conditions, there may be times when second row passengers feel as if there isn't enough heat going to their feet. If this occurs, make sure the overhead controls are dialed in properly. The front overhead console control mode switch should indicate panel, or the blower switch at the front overhead console panel must point to rear, and the function selector at the rear console panel must be pointing to panel. If the proper settings are dialed in, you'll get plenty of heat to your second row passenger's feet. Incidentally, the auxiliary air conditioning system floor setting provides airflow only to the rear quarter trim panel. The climate controls at the instrument panel control the airflow going through the ducts under your front seat. There are two questions often asked by new owners, and both concern the radio. How do I set the clock? and how do I preset the radio stations? To set the clock, press and hold the radio's clock button and either the seek or tune button at the same time. Pushing seek changes the hour reading while tune modifies minutes. 
In addition to the electronic clock, your radio has the capacity to store up to 18 radio stations at a time. There are six preset buttons for AM stations and 12 for FM. To store a station, locate the frequency you want by using the scan or tune button. When the desired station is reached, press and hold one of the memory preset buttons until the sound of the radio returns. As soon as you hear your radio, the station is held in memory. And if you're driving in a new location, your premium sound system will allow you to set stronger radio stations into memory without disturbing your original presets. To do this, press the Auto Set button and your radio will automatically store the first six strong stations of the frequency band you are in. To cancel the automatic memory, press Auto Set again. By the way, all Expedition radios are equipped with a CD button whether or not your vehicle has the optional CD changer. If your vehicle features the optional CD changer located in the center console, the CD button will turn it on and off. The button was included to make it real easy for you to add the optional Ford Electronics six disc CD player at any time. Until that time, Pressing the CD button will prompt the radio to display a no DJ message, which means you don't have a CD changer. If your vehicle is equipped with a center floor console, it features an auxiliary power outlet on the driver's side. The console also features a special control panel for the convenience of your rear seat passengers. It houses radio controls and audio jacks for earphones, plus it includes climate controls and vent registers if your vehicle does not have the auxiliary climate control system. If your new vehicle features the optional overhead console, it has ample storage space for your sunglasses and garage door opener. It also includes the power controls for the overhead lighting and auxiliary climate control system. On Eddie Bauer models, the overhead console features power switches for the quarter flip windows, trip computer, and the optional moonroof. The trip computer displays valuable travel information such as compass direction, fuel range, and fuel economy. The Eddie Bauer model also has an auto lamp delay system. It not only turns your headlamps on and off automatically, but it also keeps them on for up to three minutes when the ignition is turned off. To increase your auto lamp delay, rotate the control thumb wheel upward. To decrease it, dial it down. One of the features that makes the Expedition so versatile is the reclining, split-folding second row rear seat. To recline the rear seat, pull up on the recliner handle and hold it there until you adjust the seat back to the position you want. Then release the handle to lock it in place. To fold either seat back forward into a flat position, make sure the head restraint is in its lowest position. Then lift the flip fold latch handle to unlock the seat back. Now fold the seat back over the seat cushion until it locks. With the seat back in the horizontal position, press the green button at the center of the seat. This releases your flipper panel, creating a flat, continuous bridge between the load floor and the seat back. The rear seat head restraints are completely adjustable, sliding up and down for extra comfort during long trips. Now, if your vehicle is equipped with an optional third row seat, then the 40% portion of the second row seat can be folded up to provide easy access to the third row. To do this, release the seat back and fold it forward, then push down on the seat release handle to unfasten the seat from the floor, then rotate the whole assembly forward until it locks. With the second seat folded forward, your rear seat passengers have ample room to move easily into the third row. Like the intermediate seat, the third row rear seat features a seat back that will fold flat to give you a horizontal deck to load cargo on. Not only that, the third seat is light enough so that it can be easily removed to increase your vehicle's utility. To remove the third row seat, disconnect the safety belts from the floor by releasing the tongue from its anchor. After it's released, secure the safety belt to the D-pillar using the convenient fastener. Next, pull up on the grab handle located at the rear of the seat. Pulling the handle will release the seat from its mounting and allow you to slide the entire assembly backward toward the lift gate opening. 
Now the seat is ready to be lifted from the vehicle. When you reinstall the third row seat, make sure the safety belt is not twisted when the belt tongue is reattached to the anchor. Another item we should talk about is the optional roof-mounted luggage rack. The rear crossbar in this carrier can be adjusted to accommodate various package sizes. To make an adjustment, pull this locking lever to release the bar, move it to the position you want. When it's in place, push the lever to lock the crossbar. In addition to movement of the rear bar, each crossbar can be taken off the roof to lower the overall height of your vehicle. This handy feature is not found on many full-size sport utility vehicles. The luggage rack also features four adjustable D-rings that provide additional tie-down points. Your luggage rack offers you a lot of versatility, but there's one thing we do need to caution you about. The weight limit for the roof is 150 pounds, but if you place your cargo on top of the luggage rack crossbars, the weight limit increases to 200 pounds. By sticking to the weight limit, you won't be taking the risk of damaging your roof or losing control of your vehicle while driving. And here's another tip to remember. Whenever you use your running boards as a platform to load your luggage rack, make sure you step on the ribbed area of the board. That way you'll know the board will have plenty of strength to support you and your baggage. And always make sure that everything is properly tied down on your luggage rack. We don't want you to lose something that would create a hazard on the roadway. As you know, proper maintenance is the only way you're going to keep any vehicle in tip-top condition. So we encourage you to service your new expedition according to the recommended service intervals and maintenance practices described in your owner guide portfolio. Expedition has a battery saver that's designed to make life easier. If the hood light or interior lights are inadvertently left on with the engine off, the battery saver will automatically shut off the power going to the lights after 40 minutes, which will help preserve the life of your battery. In addition to battery saver, your engine compartment features several service points that you can work at to keep your vehicle in top-notch condition, including the engine coolant recovery reservoir, the engine oil dipstick, the automatic transmission dipstick, and the windshield washer reservoir. Each service point is clearly marked in bright yellow so you can find them easily. Even though flat tires are rare, they do happen. So if you ever need to change a tire, we have some helpful hints that will make the process seem like a walk in the park. Over here, behind this access panel, are some of the tire changing tools that you will need, including the jack and lug nut wrench, plus a set of instructions. Your jack handle is stored up front, held by two clips at the radiator support assembly. To remove your spare tire, insert the jack handle into the actuator hole at the rear bumper and turn it counterclockwise until the cable is loose enough to slide the tire to the rear of the vehicle. Now before you change your tire, make sure your vehicle is stationary by putting the gear shift in park and setting the parking brake. And be sure to block the tire diagonally opposite your flat. Now here's something very important to remember. If your new vehicle is equipped with an optional air suspension system, it needs to be shut off at the air suspension switch below the glove box. This will help prevent any sudden movement when you jack up your vehicle. Also, there are some special locations where you will need to place the jack in order to lift your vehicle. For example, to change a rear tire, the jack must be placed under the rear axle tube. When changing a front tire on a four-wheel drive expedition like this one, the jack needs to be positioned at the front under the lower control arm. And if you're changing a front tire on a two-wheel drive expedition, the jack must be positioned beneath the frame. In any case, always refer to your owner guide or tire changing instructions when jacking up your vehicle. To stow your flat tire in the tire carrier, hook up the lifting cable and turn the jack handle clockwise, raising the tire until the lift mechanism makes a clicking sound. Then make sure the tire is securely seated against the underbody by pushing firmly on the tire. Whenever you replace a tire, you should always replace it with a tire that has the same size, the same load carrying capacity, and the same tread design as the tire you're replacing. Otherwise, the safety and performance of your sport utility vehicle may be adversely affected. If you have any questions about the size and type of tire you can use, read the information label on your vehicle. 
The owner guide is another good source for tire information, but if a question still arises, please consult your dealer. Before we go out on the road, let's talk about some of the things that you should know in order to get the best performance from your vehicle. The first feature we need to look at is overdrive, which is your normal driving position. You can control overdrive from the gear shift lever by pressing this transmission control switch. Canceling overdrive will help smooth out the operation of your vehicle if the transmission is frequently shifting in hilly terrain. We also suggest that you deactivate overdrive when you're pulling a heavy load, like a recreational trailer, up a steep grade. Otherwise, your transmission may shift excessively. Canceling overdrive when traveling downhill will also allow you to use the engine to slow your vehicle down. In addition to overdrive, your automatic transmission is equipped with a brake shift interlock mechanism. This safety feature prevents the driver from shifting from park into another gear until the brake pedal is depressed. If your vehicle has an electronic speed control system, you can set your speed whenever you're traveling more than 30 miles per hour. To activate the system, Press the on button and accelerate your vehicle until you reach the speed you want. Then set the vehicle speed by pressing and releasing the set excel button. To increase speed, just tap set excel. Each time it's tapped, you'll increase your speed by one mile per hour. To decrease your speed, tap the coast button and your vehicle will slow down in one mile per hour increments. Expedition's speed-sensitive variable assist power steering system is another feature we should talk about. Unlike conventional steering systems that are designed to be a compromise between easy handling at low speeds and lots of road feel at high speeds, your variable assist steering system is programmed to make a smooth transition between both extremes. In other words, your power steering system is designed to provide effortless handling at low speeds, while at highway speeds it delivers plenty of road feel and appropriate boost to maintain control and allow for evasive maneuvers. There are lots of expeditions on the road featuring four-wheel drive. If yours is one, then it has four driving modes that you can operate in, and each driving mode is indicated on your control track selection switch. Two-wheel drive, automatic four-wheel drive, four-wheel drive high, and four-wheel low. In two-wheel drive, your vehicle sends power only to the rear wheels. This is the preferred operating mode for everyday use because it offers the best fuel economy. In automatic four-wheel drive, your vehicle has the capability to send power to the front and rear wheels when extra traction is needed. In other words, while in this mode, Control Track acts like a standby four-wheel drive system until extra traction is called for. When wheel slippage is detected while in automatic four-wheel drive, Control Track increases power to the wheels that have the most traction. This means all four wheels are capable of driving on slippery terrain. On dry pavement, the rear wheels normally do the work. Unlike many four-wheel drive systems, Control Track lets you shift from two-wheel drive to automatic at any time, no matter if your vehicle is moving or not. To shift from two-wheel drive to automatic four-wheel drive, rotate the Control Track switch. An indicator light will let you know when automatic four-wheel drive is activated. If your wheels slip excessively at speeds below 35 miles per hour while in automatic four-wheel drive, your vehicle's transfer case will automatically lock the front and rear drive lines together for approximately five minutes unless you select another four-wheel drive mode or your vehicle exceeds 45 miles per hour. When your vehicle's two drive lines lock together under high slip conditions, your A4WD light and 4x4 indicator will be lit at the same time. The third driving range featured on your sport utility vehicle is 4x4 high. This mode provides continuous four-wheel traction and is used during moderate off-road driving conditions such as shallow snow, mud, sand, or ice. Expedition's 4x4 high mode can be selected on the fly, and whenever you make the shift, your 4x4 indicator will illuminate. 
The fourth driving range featured on your sport utility vehicle is 4x4 low. This mode offers continuous four-wheel traction when extra power is needed, like when climbing up a hill, or while used as an engine brake while traveling downhill, or when maneuvering through deep snow, sand, or mud. 4x4 low should not be used at speeds exceeding 35 miles per hour. To shift in or out of 4x4 low, you will need to stop the vehicle and put the transmission in neutral with your brakes applied. The four-wheel drive low-range light will turn on when making the shift into 4x4 low. Now let's talk about Expedition's advanced air suspension system. As you may remember when talking to your sales consultant, there are two optional air suspension systems available on Expedition. The load leveling system for two-wheel drive vehicles and the four-corner air suspension system on four-wheel drive vehicles. Both systems are designed to improve Expedition's ride, handling, and standing characteristics. If your two-wheel drive Expedition features air suspension, the two air springs mounted on the rear wheels are designed to keep your vehicle at a normal ride height, even if your load changes. The four-corner system on the four-wheel drive Expedition is unique in every way. It's designed to provide multiple ride heights. Unlike the two-wheel drive system, the four-wheel drive air suspension system features air shocks in the front that work in combination with the air springs in the rear. If you have this type of system, your Expedition offers three height positions that fall within a two-inch span. For example, when your vehicle's ignition is turned on and the transmission is shifted into drive or reverse, your air suspension will raise your vehicle to its normal ride height. And when your control track selector is turned to 4x4 low and your vehicle's speed remains less than 25 miles per hour, the system will raise your expedition to its off-road position, which is approximately one inch higher than normal ride height. And when the ignition is turned off and the doors are closed, the air suspension system lowers Expedition to its kneeling position, one inch below normal ride height. The kneeling position offers easy entry and exit from your vehicle. It may take a minute for the system to adjust. If a door is opened while the air suspension system is making a height adjustment, your vehicle will automatically pause at the position it is in. And as soon as the door is closed again, the air suspension system will continue with its height adjustment. The pausing feature is found on both the load leveling and the four corner air suspension systems. In addition to the optional air suspension system, some of you may have upgraded your new Expedition from the standard trailer towing features, which include the four pin connector and the 4,000 pound capacity step bumper, to the heavy duty class three trailer towing package, like the one found on this four wheel drive vehicle. If you did, your new vehicle features a heavy-duty 7-pin wiring connector and a Class 3 receiver hitch. Other items in the upgraded towing package include an auxiliary transmission cooler and a heavy-duty battery, plus an oil cooler on vehicles with the 5.4-liter engine. When connecting a trailer to a Class 3 receiver hitch, make sure your air suspension system is turned off until you hook everything up. As soon as everything is connected, turn the air suspension system back on by activating the switch located below the glove box. In fact, whenever you hook up a trailer to your new expedition, it's always a good idea to read the towing information in your owner guide. For more extensive information, refer to the Ford Recreational Vehicle and Trailer Towing Guide. Both documents provide do's and don'ts of towing. And always remember, towing has an effect on your vehicle's performance. It raises your acceleration time, reduces your fuel efficiency, and it increases your stopping distance. I also want to remind you that if you're a proud owner of a premium Eddie Bauer Expedition like this one, it features exterior signal mirrors that flash an arrow when you activate your turn signal. You won't be able to see any arrows if you're driving or sitting in the passenger front seat, but they're there just the same, visible to drivers behind you, telling them of your intention. And another word of caution before we go out on the road, if you're driving a four-wheel drive for the first time, remember that it handles differently than a regular passenger car, especially when it's fully loaded. That's because four-wheelers are built to be used off-road. 
So we ask you, be extra careful when you start driving your new four-wheel drive sport utility vehicle. Take it slow and easy until you get to know it really well. A little extra caution will always go a long way when driving a sport utility vehicle. And always be sure to buckle up. When driving your new Expedition, it is important to remember that the braking characteristics of a four-wheel drive Expedition are the same as a two-wheel drive. Contrary to what some people believe, a driver cannot stop in a shorter distance with a four-wheel drive vehicle. And like all other four-wheel drive vehicles, Expedition has a high center of gravity to give it the clearance that's needed to operate in the backcountry. And because of its high four-wheel stance, you will need to be very careful when driving your vehicle through an emergency situation on the highway. For example, if you're driving along a road and something happens to make you go off the edge of the pavement, slow your vehicle down, but don't apply the brakes too severely. As soon as you have control, ease your vehicle back on the pavement when traffic clears, and be sure not to turn the wheels too sharply when returning to the road. If, however, you are forced off the road into a shallow ditch, don't try to turn your wheels too sharply to get out of it. What you need to do is drive in a straight line and ease yourself out, checking for traffic before re-entering the highway. Caution should also be exercised when off-roading in the backcountry. When operating in tight off-road situations, you should always make sure you have plenty of room at the front and rear of the vehicle to clear obstacles and always swing wide enough to avoid any objects. If you ever find yourself in a situation where you need to drive over a series of logs, it's best to roll over each log one wheel at a time rather than attacking it head on. And never attempt to drive over anything unless there's plenty of clearance between your vehicle and the object. The best way to climb a steep hill is to drive straight up the grade. You should never, and I mean never, try to reach the top of a hill by angling up the side of an incline. When moving down a steep grade, be sure your transmission is in low gear so that your engine will help slow your descent. If you're off-roading in sand or loose terrain, try to keep your wheels on the solid part of the trail. For best results, put your transmission in low gear and accelerate slowly. And if you can, always avoid lowering the air pressure in your tires to improve traction. But if you must lower the pressure for any reason, remember to reinflate them to the recommended air pressure before returning to the highway. Mud can be very tricky to drive in because you need to be alert for any sudden changes in speed and direction. Even a four-wheel drive vehicle can lose traction in slick mud. So if you start to slide, turn your wheels in the direction of the slide and try to gain control of the vehicle. Water is equally challenging. So before you attempt to cross any stream or bog, check to see how deep the water is. Make sure it isn't so deep that the water will go over your hubs. When traversing a stream, drive slowly to avoid splashing water on your ignition system. And when you reach dry ground, be sure to test your brakes before driving off. If they're wet, drive slowly while touching lightly on the brake pedal to dry them off. There's a lot of natural beauty in the great outdoors, and it's there for everyone to enjoy. So whenever you drive in the backcountry, use approved off-road areas and leave the land as you found it. It means the beauty will be there for those who follow, so tread lightly. Well, that wraps it up from here. We hope this video has given you a better understanding of all the unique features found in your new Ford Expedition. But if you have a question about a feature that you don't understand or wasn't covered in our program, try to find an answer in your owner guide. And if that doesn't help you, contact your nearest dealer. So remember, to get the very most out of your new Expedition, treat it properly and don't place any demands on it that may be unsafe. Your adventure has begun, so get out there. And enjoy what the great outdoors has to offer.